Well, here we are at the FXIC Forex Industry Conference in Shanghai, China. I'm Andrew Sachs McLeod, Chief Executive Officer of Finance Feeds, and I'm joined today by Mark Smedley, Head of Partnerships at Drive Wealth. Thank you, Andrew. Glad to be here today. Nice to see you. Thanks. And we've just heard a very interesting debate, actually. It was more of a, a debate than a panel discussion, which is really healthy to see, mm. uh, about the diversification of, uh, of, of asset classes that's happening in the forex industry. And China is one of the main regions for this specific uh, matter. And actually, I was very interested to hear that Drive Wealth has uh, really brought the US equities, exchange-traded US equities, into almost a retail audience and can actually host it on the same platform as, as retail products, am I right? That's exactly right. And as a matter of fact, we are focused on the retail market. It enables us to serve clients globally across any level of income and any level of experience in investing. And so we've done a great job in partnering with firms like CQG and also DirectFX to bring a multi-asset solution that can be customized to look and feel like any broker from this area. That's excellent. And it can be done from within. Uh, let's say I'm a retail trader and I want to take this in, almost institutional style exchange trading equities package. I don't live in the United States because it's a US domiciled equities package. I can actually integrate that into my own trading platform. Is that, that into MetaTrader 4 or anything like that? Is that well, actually, we've gone a step further than being able to integrate it. We've done that for you. So we right. give the client the opportunity to open uh, an account, and it uh, will open equities, futures, and FX accounts all at the same time for the retail Very client. Yeah. And it's, all, it's, it's seamless within one package. There's no need to look for different windows. And it's, it's all, let's say you want, you, a client wants to trade FX uh, and then sees a signal that comes up, wants to trade an equities um, trade. It can be done from within the same package. Yeah, within exactly the same platform, and on the CQG1 platform, they're able to trade from the screen itself. Right. Very interesting indeed. So these are the, we're now seeing the days of, of U.S., what could, what, what could have really been in the, in the past, only available to the prop shops of Chicago and New York, mm -hmm. now available to, uh, to, to retail trades with quants and things like that. Very interesting. Yeah, we make it available globally, uh, but we think China's a very appealing market to us. Yeah, and that's actually something very, very, very good point because you, you've got, you're actually do domiciling the equity in the US, the client owns the equity. How is that translatable to a Chinese audience when, they're, when, when there's so many regulatory restrictions and usually this is a domestic market only within the United States? Well, it is a unique aspect for them, I think, but the strategic thing that we've done is partnered with ICBC Financial Services, and they're our clearing operator in the United States. And so all assets, are custodied and cleared by ICBC. So we appreciate having that brand name that the Chinese consumer knows and recognizes. And uh, we think it brings a lot of confidence to our customers as they begin to open accounts overseas for the first time in their investing uh, lives. Most definitely does yeah. because one of the things that I've noticed and certainly researching uh, the way that not only the clients but large scale IBs and portfolio managers who are very likely to go for this kind of type of professional product mm -hmm. are concerned about sending their funds abroad because once it's gone out of China they can't see it because there's a lot of internet blocking. Um, so if you've got a name like ICBC that is a Chinese company, that is more likely to have a lot more effect on the ability to have a, a, a synergy between your company and the Chinese investor. No so doubt about that's it. A really good thing to have. Yeah, the ICBC component is something that I think the retail investor, as well as the institutional investor, would recognize, and that's something that I think they respond to uh, immediately. And then we have an opportunity to explain to them that it is a U.S. domiciled account where their assets are custodied, and those accounts, because we securitize everything in there, are CIPIC protected, and it's a form of insurance to some extent where each of those accounts are protected up to $500,000, of which 250000 can be in cash. That's very good. And I think the mm -hmm. Chinese uh, retail investors, they know this. I, I've been told by many, many, many uh, high net worth China, Chinese investors who do a lot of electronic trading, autom automated electronic trading, so they're quite clearly at the higher end, mm -hmm. that that is their major concern. They will only work with British or American companies. They want to see a, a length of time in service. They want to see exactly which institution is holding their funds and if they can't, they will not invest. And especially coming at a time when uh, the Chinese government is now blocking uh, a lot of transfers by algorithmic payment systems into mm -hmm. foreign companies and now only using union pay. But despite that, once it's gone outside, it, it, it's gone. It's, it can't be seen. So that has to be something that I'd like to, I'd like to follow, the, follow the success of that in the future. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think one of the biggest challenges that we contend with is the ability for customers to fund that account. 
And so we have a range of unique methods that enable them to do just that. And so we respond to that in an efficient manner. Yes, makes perfect sense. Thanks. Very interesting indeed, and, and very nice to see you, Mark. Appreciate that. Thanks for having us in.